Hey, it's me, Jay Guy, coming to you once again from an undisclosed, well, shit, I'll just say it. You all know I am in Wellington, freaking Kansas, Crusader country, so that's how it is. So anyway, happy President's Day. It's a good day to celebrate. Uh, Washington's birthday. February 22nd, 1732, born in Virginia, Lincoln, February 12th, I believe, 1809, in Kentucky. And I was really dug the presidents when I, well, no. I started digging them when I was in about kindergarten and I was learning about them in Mrs. Alley's class in kindergarten in Robinson Elementary back in Augusta, Kansas. And uh, my, my grandparents gave me a book with all the presidents in it. And it kind of ended with FDR because it was an old freaking book. It was like from the Depression. So they gave it to me and had pictures of them and all... Uh, biographies my mom always told me when I was older that I always kind of liked Millard Fillmore I don't think it's that name Millard Fillmore and I was talking to a buddy of mine this morning and this, this guy he's he's got a bald head and you know big bushy beard and he said that he is related to two presidents, William Henry Harrison, who served the shortest term of any president because he got pneumonia, because he froze, because he did something stupid, just given that, that speech when he was in wet clothes in cold weather. I'm sorry, I don't mean to disparage any of my friend's ancestors. I just... He, he could have been an okay guy, just wasn't, uh, wasn't really a, a practical move. So related to William Henry Harrison and his grandson, Benjamin Harrison, who my friend kind of resembles because Benjamin Harrison had a big ass beard. Okay. And from the presidents, that really was the gateway to my interest in all of American history and all of world history. Pretty much unlocked that door for me. And now I'm, I'm good buddies with Dr. Price, my friend, Dr. J. Price, who um, is head of the public history program at WSU. And I just love to talk history with him. It's fun, he asks me what is my favorite period in history when well, I'm like, hell, Dr. Price. It's like asking me what my favorite rock and roll song is. I mean, my, I like them all. So, really, I um, and as far as presidents go, uh, I think my favorite, I know my favorite really, is Jimmy Carter, who is unfortunately in hospice now, 98 years old, and really at that age, you, you're you're kind you're you're coming toward where the end can be any day, and I'm just so sorry because I just remember. My, my grand, my grandma telling me when I was a little boy that, that Jimmy Carter was a peacemaker. My grandpa guy, he told me that too. He really liked Jimmy Carter because he was about peace. And I started reading this book because I've read several books about him. This just came out in about 2006. Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid by Jimmy Carter. And is about how we can have peace in the Middle East 
he he believes it's possible and he first made his he made his first journey to the Middle East in 1973 when he was still governor of Georgia and saw the Holy Land because he was a, a Christian and he wanted to see these holy places but he also wanted to gather facts about the the conflicting parties of you know in Palestine and Israel and uh, other countries in the region who were separated by politics and culture and religion um, but he he believes he, he was a peacemaker and that is really going to be the legacy of the organization he founded the Carter Center they have been on peace missions humanitarian missions in Africa, Central America, all those places where they're impoverished in the world. And really, if he, if Jimmy Carter hadn't even been president, his, his gift as a humanitarian and as a writer, because he's a very prolific writer. I've, I've read several books he's written, you know, politics, theology, memoir. He's, he's a genius. And um, the first president that I really had a good, clear memory of when I was a little kid. And, um, well, we love you, Mr. President. So, oh, also February, Black History Month. And I've got um, a lot of books by black authors like Zora Neale Hurston, uh, James Baldwin, people like that. Um, and I, rec I got Before the Mayflower, which is about the contributions that blacks have been making to American history and culture since they were first brought here in 1619. Been listening to the podcast 1619 and been watching the show on Hulu. Anyway, that that was a book 1619, but I, right now I'm reading this book. Shit, can we see it here? Good, good booty. Love and sex, black and white, body and soul in American music. And it's just about how the black culture has contributed, African Americans have contributed so richly. It's probably the greatest contribution that they have given to American arts and culture is their music. And it's given us, you know, the, the work songs, the Negro spirituals, ragtime, jazz, blues, rock and roll, soul, funk, hip hop. It, it, all, it all started with them. And I just think it's, it's a fascinating story. I think that phrase, good booty, came from, from Little Richard. And it's really interesting. I talked about how the presidents were my gateway to a lifelong interest in history. And I think that white singers and rock groups who were influenced by blues music and gospel and things of that nature were my gateway into black music. For example, I listened to Elvis, and that led me to Little Richard and to Black Gospel. I listened to The Stones, The Doors, Led Zeppelin, and then I kind of wanted to go to their influences, that the origins of the songs that they were performing, the riffs and everything. Um, 
Robert Johnson, Muddy Waters, um, Hal and Wolf, all those people. So, really interesting. So anyway, I want to end this President's Day with a poem that was written by Walt Whitman. It was in, in response to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. And you probably know it. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Oh, Walt Whitman also had a big ass beard. Yeah, no lie. Oh, and this book, Leaves of Grass. What I really like about this is that every book, every used book, that is, has a history to it. And this one, you see in here, shit, can we see this? It says, to Roy from Gale with love, Valentine's 1955. Now, I don't know who they were. They could have been college sweethearts, husband and wife, a couple that were together and later broke up. They're most likely no longer alive now. Uh, I kind of have my own fantasy where they're this couple like maybe in their 30s or 40s, kind of in the middle of life. And they have this, this romance together. And maybe they got married later, but I'd like to think that Gail gave Roy this book when they were still dating, when they were still, you know, having, having that relationship. And maybe, maybe that's as far as it went. Okay. Shit, I lose my place here. Captain, my captain. Page 267. Oh, Captain. Here it is. Oh, Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. Oh, Captain, My Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But, O oh heart, 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 O oh bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O oh captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells, rise up, for you, the flag is flung. For you, the bugle trills. For you, bouquets and ribboned wreaths. For you, the shores are crowding. For you, they call the swaying mass. Their faces eager turning. Here, Captain, dear father, 
this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on this deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse, nor will. The ship is anchored, safe and sound. Its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object one. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells, but I, with mournful dread, walk the deck. My captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O oh, Captain, my captain, by Walt Whitman. I've always been a Walt Whitman man. Okay, so that is really about all my junk for today. I will see you later. And again, Happy President's Day, happy Black History Month, and just remember, I'm America, and so can you. Peace out.